Hello everyone and welcome to the very first video in our little uh, rendering with V-Ray in Blender, the basics series of tutorials. My name is Nates and I'll be your host here. The overarching plan for us here is to go through some of the very basics when it comes to the V-Ray for Blender integration so that you know where the essentials are, well, and how you can use them. Now, in this specific tutorial, we're going to be doing an overview of the V-Ray plugin, see how the general workflow looks like and where some of the buttons are and just one on one basic things like that. Now, before we dive any deeper into things, just as a bit of a heads up, the V-Ray for Blender add on, at least at the time of recording this video, just reached its first official release, which is definitely uh, a big deal. And it's something we're all quite excited about because now everyone can use it. It is no longer in beta. And if you've used some of the really older V-Ray for Blender versions from the time of the dinosaurs, I suppose, then please know this version has been written from complete scratch. Okay, so with V-Ray, what you're getting is a state-of-the-art renderer that is designed to get you top-notch photorealistic results without in the grand scheme of things, breaking too much of a sweat while still being very versatile in the type of images it can output. We see V-Ray being used across multiple industries, including ArcVis, ProductVis, VFX, and the like, much like it is in other DCC tools. Now, V-Ray also has some really neat functionality, such as, for example, the light mix functionality, which makes it possible to change the color and the intensity of the lights in your scenes without re-rendering the image itself. This is one of V-Ray's most popular features, in my opinion. Then there's the V-Ray material, which makes creating physically accurate materials a lot easier uh, because you don't have to mix and mash different materials together to get a single realistic material going. Plus, you've got specialized materials for hair and car paints and the like. But that's not all, as you also get the V-Ray physical camera, which basically lets you control your 3D camera settings as you would on a real world camera, which is quite, quite handy in my opinion. Now, V-Ray also comes with a CPU and a GPU render engine. It is important to note, however, that these are two different render engines. One is called V-Ray, it works specifically on CPUs and it has the broadest feature set. And the other render engine is the V-Ray GPU render engine, which runs on your GPUs. As an interesting tidbit, V-Ray GPU also comes with hybrid rendering, if that's what you're into. But we'll talk more about these things in the upcoming tutorials. And then you also get advanced caustic rendering, which makes both reflective and refractive rendering of caustic effects possible. So a really, really neat feature. There's also multiple built-in denoising options that can help make your render times a bit more manageable. And there is more and more things like that that makes V-Ray as popular as it is. Now, to be perfectly honest, this is basically our first V-Ray for Blender release. And so not all the features made the cut yet. But this initial version is based on the latest and greatest V-Ray 7 core, so you get V-Ray's latest rendering tech day one. Then there's still features that the team is still working hard on bringing over. Features such as, for example, the V-Ray decals, which make it downright easy to plaster decals onto things in your scenes without UV unwrapping anything, mind you. And then there's V-Ray Enmesh, which basically gives you an easy way to define a piece of geometry you want to tile across objects slash surfaces and render time, etc., etc. So basically, there's uh, features that are still incoming and are planned to be released in future versions. Okay, and now let's do some housekeeping for a bit. If you experience any issues, you can report them by clicking on the report a bug button in Blender's preferences under the V-Ray menu. And if you want to see any new features added and influence where the product goes, check out the uh, V-Ray for Blender Ideas portal. This is the main place where we keep tabs on what our users want and what do you want the development team to prioritize uh, with regards to new features. If you'd like to partake in the V-Ray for Blender community or if you have any sort of questions, well then also feel free to jump over on the Chaos forums where I or anyone else from our fabulous support and dev teams will gladly try and help you out. Last but not least, don't forget there's also the documentation pages. Uh, you can learn a lot by going through these as we try to make them quite detailed and there's often visual examples of what a certain parameter does, for example. So it's a really uh, useful place to check out. All right, okay, with that, I guess, intro behind us, 
Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to hop into Blender and we're going to have a look at how things work. Okay, so V-Ray for Blender comes in the form of an add-on. Now we're going to skip the how to install V-Ray for Blender part because it's rather easy. In essence, you just need to click next a couple of times. But once the installation is done, you can open up Blender, go into your preferences, then add-ons, and then here you can now just enable V-Ray. Once you've done that, you can then select V-Ray from the render engine list in your render properties window. Now, because V-Ray is an add-on, that means that internally Blender will recognize it needs to change certain parts of the UI to accommodate the render engine of choice. So, for example, once you've switched over to V-Ray, you'll see that up here you now get a V-Ray menu, in which reside the shortcuts to the most common features of the render engine. If you bring up the Shift A menu, you'll also be able to see that you now have a couple of new entries in here. So, for example, you can now create new V-Ray lights a lot more efficiently because they're now exposed to you through this menu as well. In addition to that, you'll now also be able to see that the shader node editor now changed to the V-Ray node editor. That is because with V-Ray, you'll be using different kinds of nodes than, for example, you did with Cycles because, you know, V-Ray is not Cycles and it works differently and all that. On top of that, if you switch the node editor to the world mode, you'll get access to V-Ray's environment settings, its effect settings. This is where you add environment fog, for example, and also a place where you can add view layers, render channels, render passes, render elements, or however else you want to call them. If you hit Shift A, you'll notice things are essentially sorted based on categories meaning things that you'll probably want to plug into the render channels, for example, are under the render channels category. And the same goes for effects as well. In object mode, you can set special V-Ray related object properties to the currently selected objects. If you're by any chance a 3ds Max user, this is sort of equivalent to object properties and also the displacement modifier. And if you're a Cinema 4D user, then this is pretty much the V-Ray object tag workflow you got here. Now, as another note, in terms of the UI, is that you'll see new object settings you can tweak, and the V-Ray specific ones are highlighted a bit differently as they have the V-Ray icon in front of their title. Eagle Light amongst you might also notice that we have a V-Ray specific property or setting here called the V-Ray Object Properties. And this one has a couple of settings that match some of those we've seen in the node editor when in object mode. So, Sometimes there's duplicate properties, and if you change one of them in either of the locations, the other one in the other location will also update accordingly. Now, just to prove that point again, just so it really sinks in, if we, for example, go under the view layer properties menu here, and if we add a render channel uh, this way, so we're just going to add a multi mat render channel, you're going to see that that render channel is also going to get added in the node view in the node editor when in world mode, right? And vice versa, if I delete it from in here, it's also going to get, well, not deleted, but disabled in the view layer properties menu, okay? So just keep in mind that you can toggle things on and off from multiple places sometimes. Okay, so now as you were able to see, the UI and the UX in Blender will change a bit once you set your render to V-Ray. This makes working with V-Ray easier obviously, because it puts V-Ray related things a bit more closer to you. That said, not everything adapts to the V-Ray workflow, at least not currently, we are still working on things. So you might still see some of Cycle stuff around and that stuff might, might work or it might not work with V-Ray or vice versa, of course. Okay, so with that all said, we are at the tail end of this intro tutorial. Hopefully the video was informative enough so that you've learned a couple of new things and well, that you're ready to learn more. Because remember, this is a series of tutorials after all. In this one, we talked about how V-Ray is integrated and how the UI looks like and how the general user experience is like. In the next tutorial, we'll, well, we'll learn even more about V-Ray for Blender. And if you want to know uh, what the next video is about, well, maybe consider su subscribing to this channel so you get notified when it gets released. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you learned something new and we'll see you in the next one.